Hey, what's up? It's Václav. This is a second part of the five-part series uh, about automations in Home Assistant. In the first one, uh, we have uh, installed this uh, Zigbee motion detector sensor into Home Assistant. So this was a start. We're going to use that across uh, the whole tutorial. And then uh, we have created our first automation, but we actually didn't create any uh, scripts or any sequence of things. We have used a blueprint which was delivered uh, with the Home Assistant. And then we uh, actually downloaded another blueprint created by the community uh, for, from the Home Assistant um, wiki. Uh, so this was the first part. If you didn't see that, here is the link. You can watch it. Uh, now, today what we're going to do is we're going to actually start creating automations. But we will start simple. We will use the graphical user interface and we will start from the device page. And uh, we will use uh, some of those triggers uh, for this motion sensor device and uh, start from there. So let's get started. Right, so before we start, we're going to clean up again. So I'm going to go to automations and I'm gonna search for the guest room motion activated light for sun condition again, and I'm gonna delete it. And remember, I have deleted it, but we can at any time go back to the blueprint and recreate it and very easily configure it. So we're not really losing anything. It's a beauty of blueprints. So we don't have the automation anymore. In fact, if I want, I can delete this one, clean it up a little bit. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create automation from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to device and services and I'm gonna open the motion sensor, new motion sensor. And uh, here we are, so this is the device page for the motion sensor. And the easiest thing uh, to do is I'm gonna start the automation right from here. So I'm going to start automation, do something when the new motion sensor started detecting motion. So this is the trigger when we start detecting motion. I'm going to click on that. And uh, so there's a trigger when the device new motion sensor started detecting motion. And I'm going to give it a description again. So I will call it new motion sensor started detecting motion. Uh, and there's a condition I'm going to get back to it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, call a service. I'm going to call service turn light on and I'm going to select the guest room. So with this, if I will save that, this essentially did the very same thing as the default blueprint that came with the home assistant. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to take it a little bit further because what I can do is I can add additional step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call additional service because when I came to the guest room, I came from a hallway. So if I turn the light on in the guest room, I can very well automatically turn the light off in the hallway as well because maybe I don't have a motion sensor in the hallway or I don't want to wait for the motion to expire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the service turn light off in the uh, in the hallway. So this is already something unique. I'm gonna turn light on in one room and because I came from the other room I can turn the light off in the other room and this is a group of lights in this case. Now um, I can add conditions. So um, one of the conditions, I actually ha have this scenario. So one of the conditions I have here is if in the home zone, so if at home there is only one person and there is no guest mode enabled, that it'll work. Because if I have more people than one at home, I, I don't want to do that because it might be that, you know, there might be other people in house and I want to just turn off the lights because I just entered some room and they might be the other in the other. But anyhow, I'm not going to complicate it. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to add a condition for sun and it's going to be before the sunrise and 
after the sunset. So I'm gonna do pretty much similar thing as the custom blueprint we downloaded. So when the motion is detected, before sunrise and after sunset, this is going to turn on the light in the guest room and it's gonna turn off the light in the hallway. So I'm gonna save it and it's gonna create the automation. Remember, I'm just turning the light on, I'm not turning it off. Because maybe I would like to have a different automation that is going to turn the light off. And one of the real scenarios actually is, I like to use motion sensors to turn the light on but I don't want the motion sensors to turn the light off because it's quite annoying when I stop moving. I lie down or I don't move. It will turn the lights off. So maybe I would like to turn the lights off based on a different condition. For example, based on the local presence using some Bluetooth tracking. But I don't want to use the Bluetooth tracking to turn the light on because that it would be quite slow. So turning light on, triggering light on based on motion sensor is fine, but turning it off, I might do it when people leave the room and maybe with the combination on the door sensor. So uh, it's really up to you uh, how you design your house to be comfortable for your living. So uh, it was just an example. And the reason I'm talking about those different scenarios is to tell you that if you don't have to rely on a blueprint and you start creating your own automations, sky is the limit and you can really think about the way the house should respond to your being in the house to be helpful and to make the living more pleasant and less annoying. So that's the automation, well half of it anyhow, we're just turning the light on, we're not turning it off, but I think it's been helpful. So that wasn't too bad, right? Uh, you created your first automation. Um, but what if uh, you do it and the automation doesn't work as expected? What you can do? Uh, well, you can obviously open it and try to see if you find some error. But Home Assistant can actually do something better than that. Uh, there is a tool that can help you to see whether the automation was triggered and then you can open it and you can actually trace it and follow it step by step to see where it went and what it did and uh, what was inside. Which is taking it to a bit more advanced level, I admit. So if you don't want to see that, this is not mandatory, you don't have to go there. But I think if you're going to start creating your own uh, automation, this might actually help you. So. Uh, let me show that to you. There are a couple of ways to find it. Uh, we can go through the configuration into automations and from there we can just search for it and uh, find it here and then we can edit it or go to the debugging from here or we can go through the device where we have created our automation. So this is the new motion sensor. You can open it in here and uh, you can open the automation from there. And here we can go to show trace and uh, also recently Home Assistant introduced uh, this bar that shows up above the trigger if the automation is triggered so it's quite useful as well. But we're gonna go to show trace and here we can see all the traces when the automation was run. So it was run right now 653, before that it was uh, 650 and so on. And for each of those runs we can see the details, uh, we can see that it was triggered by the motion device. We can see some variables that were passed by the trigger to the automation. I'm going to show you another one where it's going to be more interesting. And in here we can see different steps. So we can see that the service light turn on was called for this light and uh, light turn off was called for the other light. So this automation is simple, so it's just a trigger and two steps. Let me show you something more interesting. Uh, so I have here a blueprint uh, for the uh, garbage collection sensor for the holidays handling. So it's a blueprint move on holiday. And if I see the trace of this one, and here you can see it's a little bit more complex. So there is a loop which is repeatedly executed. And inside this loop there is a condition 
So some of the passes can end up in here and some of them they can continue into the action. Uh, so I'm not going to go to this one because we haven't spoken about the repeat actions yet. But what I wanted to show you is when this automation was triggered, it was triggered by the event garbage collection loaded from the entity sensor test. And this trigger sent data with it. So this event data, it had uh, two attributes. One was entity ID, which is the ID of the entity that triggered that. And there's also an attribute called collection dates, which is sent by, in this case, the uh, garbage collection. And it sent the list of all the different dates that were calculated by the integration. So this event was triggered and it sent all of those days together. So what this automation does is it goes through all of those different events. So it goes through all of them one by one and it's doing some checking. And if the check is true, then it will call service garbage collection offset date with some parameters which are set by some template. But now I'm getting really ahead of myself because we're gonna be discussing uh, those templates in part four. Uh, of this uh, masterclass. Also, by the way, because this automation was created from Blueprint, here we have the Blueprint configuration, which is quite useful. So this is Blueprint called Move on Holiday, and uh, these are the two parameters that were configured for this Blueprint. So now you know. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, I mean, for this uh, automation we have, it was probably not necessary. Uh, it's rather simple automation. Uh, we get it triggered and then we call to services. There is no reason why it shouldn't work. The only thing you could probably do is to check whether it was triggered and when. But other than that, uh, you probably wouldn't use that for this. But in the next, in the third part, we're gonna start looking at a little bit more advanced automations. We're gonna start in some more advanced business logic into looping and branching. Uh, and if you do some of those, I'm pretty sure you're going to find this quite useful. And, uh, and we will do that in the next video. Until then, bye.